Hello. This is another item that I got on the car boot sale last Sunday. This came from the same stall as the Korg Delta that I repaired in a previous video. Now this is the Roland Rhythm Composer drum machine, the TR505. This is 16 drum tones. This 48 patterns, you can make up six songs. Uh, there's a polyphony of eight voices and it uses samples, it's not analog. This is 12 bit samples. It's, uh, you know, it's got full MIDI implementation. It's nothing fantastic, but it's, it's a good starter. Good play along drum machine. Uh, used by Vince Clark, he had one of these. Now, in the back, this doesn't work for some strange reason. That's why I'm doing this video. But in the back, I did notice the typical alkaline battery leakage. If you can see in there. Now I'm going to show you how to clean up alkaline off a circuit board. So firstly, we'll get the batteries out, if we can. Nope, they're stuck into place. Yeah. Oh well. Oh, it feels very crusty that is. Kind of... I hope that hasn't gotten too far into the circuit. Mm, doesn't look too bad. There's a bit of leakage going off down there. A bit of dirt, but anyway, we're going to clean all that up. Let's just get rid of these batteries here. Into the bin. And then, take this apart. These are those horrible plastic cases. I don't think the volume, oh hang on, the volume and the tempo button might be holding it together. Yeah, they came off easy enough. Right, try again. Split this apart. Uh, doesn't look too bad actually inside there. And one handy feature is we've got plugs. Oh good. If only Korg put these in that delta, it would have made life a little bit easier. Alright, split those apart. Now then, there's the inside of the Roland TR505. Not a lot in there, but enough for it to do its job. I'll test this lithium battery as well here. I don't see any obvious signs of damage on this side of the board. However, let's have a look on the bottom. No. No visual damage on the bottom. Hmm. Okay. So why don't you work? Uh, right, I'll open up this battery connector because this will need a little bit of a touch up in there, a little bit of a clean, I'm sure. Yeah. There's a bit of battery acid here. Now that's really reasonably easy to remove. I'm going to show you how. All you need is some household vinegar because that's alkaline and this is an acid and one will negate the other to a degree. So a little bit of vinegar in a small pot. And then some cotton buds or Q-tips I believe they're called in the US of A. 
and we're going to dab this into the alkaline and let it soak in. Just get it nice and wet. The connectors, there's only a little bit on the connectors here, but we'll get those off as well. You can actually see the green, greyish green gunge coming up immediately on the cotton buds. Uh, after you've given this a, a little bit of time to work its way in, it'll easily start lifting up the alkaline and then you'll get so much of it up and then you can just put a little bit more let this work in a bit further now once we've cleaned out as much as we possibly can we've got to neutralize the vinegar the acid so this is these are just baby wipes, the water-based ones. And now I'm just going to clean around to try and neutralise the vinegar. Around the battery contacts, they're looking nice and clean already. With some kitchen towel and we'll be good to go. And find out why it doesn't work. That bit's clean, great. Okay, now there's nothing that works on here at all. There's no LEDs comes up, nothing comes up on the display. So I'm going to start right at the beginning where the power comes in. And I'll power it back up again and just take a few little measurements and see how far we get before, before the power stops. This battery here is 3.3 volts. So that's been replaced and you can sort of tell because the solder's clean. So somebody has put a new battery in at some time. However, I've noticed where the power socket is, I think it's been pushing away at the solder and it's formed a crack. So somebody pushing the plug in, pulling the plug out over time has made a bad connection on the circuit board there. So I'm going to get a soldering iron across these and give them a bit of fresh solder where the power jack is. I mean I couldn't test it with the batteries because the batteries were in that condition anyway. All I did was plugged in the 9 volts and tested it that way. So this could be a, another one of those super duper easy fixes. Let me just refresh these. That's better. What happens is, every time you plug a jack in and out, in and out, it's putting pressure on the pins here. So, let me stick that back into the rest of the display and put 9 volts in and see what happens. All I've done here now is plugged the top board back together again and I've resoldered the power jack on the bottom there and we'll give it 9 volts. On these, the positive is on the outside and the pin is negative on these Roland things. And now, give it a little bit of power. Oh, that was too easy. That was too easy. It's actually, the display's lit up. Okay, now then, let's plug it into an amplifier and see what happens. Power it up. That sounds good. Sounds nice and healthy. A uh, bit of volume. There's your tempo. Uh, screw the thing back together again. That was too simple. But at least I got to uh, clean up all the battery connector. And yeah, it looks nice and neat inside. Actually, what I might do is just take off this display 
because there's all dust and crap behind the display. So I'll do that bit while we've got it apart. Well, I'm sorry that's going to be a short video because it was a very easy fix. Just the fact that you're plugging in and out uh, a power adapter eventually is going to put some you know, force onto the pins on the board. But now it's all cleaned up and we've taken all the alkali now. I've put a set of batteries in and it works on batteries or it works on power supply. And yeah, simple. There you go.